Hi, welcome back to Fair TV. I'm Peter Hart. With Glenn Greenwald's new book out, Edward Snowden is back in the news. Here's ABC This Week anchor Martha Raddatz. And a year later, Snowden still sparks a raging debate. Well, evidently, she didn't mean on her own show, though. Viewers heard from former NSA chief Keith Alexander, who was introduced this way. Edward Snowden is a traitor and could be a spy, recruited by Russia to target the U.S. That's the suspicion of the man who was running the NSA when the breach happened last year. Alexander claimed Snowden did great harm to U.S. national security. Losing capabilities to track terrorists. This is a huge impact. Okay, so maybe there's another guest who is going to provide some sort of debate. Nope. The other guest was former national security aide Richard Clark. You heard what General Alexander said. Do you think that Edward Snowden damaged national security? I know he did. And so we no longer have the heads up that an attack is coming on our embassy and fill in the blank uh, because of what he did. So despite what ABC's on-screen graphic might say, the only real debate was a quick soundbite from ACLU's Anthony Romero. Nearly a year later, the coverage of the NSA surveillance scandal still suffers from an over-reliance on the agency's most ardent defenders. How long does it take the New York Times to issue a correction? Sometimes a lot longer than it should. On May 1st, the Times' Jody Rudorin wrote a piece about a viral video shot in the West Bank that shows an Israeli soldier arguing with Palestinian teenagers and then raising his gun at them. The video sparked outrage, but one sentence in the Times' account seemed to justify the soldier's actions. It also turned out that one of the teenagers in Hebron had brass knuckles. But activist Patrick Connors reported for Mondo Weiss that this was not the case. It's certainly not evident in the video that was the subject of the story. The group that shot it, Youth Against Settlements, claimed that no one had weapons. What were being called brass knuckles were actually prayer beads. What's more, the Times had actually interviewed a member of that group who told them that there were no such weapons. But that didn't make it into the newspaper. After many people emailed the Times about this inaccuracy, the offending sentence was changed to this. There were also widespread reports that one of the teenagers in Hebron had brass knuckles. Now, technically, that's true. It's also totally misleading. About a week later, the paper did finally publish a correction, noting that it had overstated what is known about one of the Palestinian teenagers pictured in the video. That correction still leaves a lot to be desired, but it's a pretty safe bet that without the activists pressing the Times, it wouldn't exist at all. Finally, there are a number of ways a journalist might respond to an interview subject who's making outlandish statements. We got a lesson in one way to do it, or not do it, from ABC's Jonathan Carl, who sat down with Republican star Senator Marco Rubio. Now, to his credit, Carl asked Rubio about climate change. What he got in response was a string of climate denial talking points. Our climate is always changing. And what they have chosen to do is take a handful of decades of research and, and say that this is now evidence of a longer term trend that's directly and almost solely attributable to man-made activity. You don't I do buy, not agree with you that. Don't I don't know of any era in world history where the climate has been stable. Climate is always evolving and natural disasters have always existed. I do not believe that human activity is causing these dramatic changes to our climate the way these scientists are portraying it. Now, there's a lot you might say about what Rubio had just said, but Carl closed the segment with this. It's talk like that that Rubio hopes will appeal to the conservatives he'd need to win the Republican nomination. That's a pretty clear example of a journalist adopting the mentality of a campaign strategist or a political operative. Sure, a hard right stance is going to go over better with the GOP base, but a reporter whose first loyalty is to the truth would find it more important to acknowledge that Rubio is dramatically and dangerously at odds with science, rather than musing on his political fortunes. I'm Peter Hart. Thanks for tuning in to FAIR TV.